Hey everyone, welcome back to Jashelle Tech TV. This video is an update on my personal learning. I've been doing the 100 days of code challenge. For 100 days, you set aside time to code for at least an hour. For me, sometimes it's just reviewing topics, learning something new, or doing small projects. One of the topics I reviewed was responsive design on MDN's website, and their responsive design course hits on a variety of topics such as responsive layout techniques, media queries, legacy layout methods, and supporting older browsers. One thing I like about the articles on MDN is how they provide ways to practice or apply your skills through various assessments and coding projects. I'll be going over the responsive web design skills assessment, which allows you to practice and apply various front-end development skills as it relates to responsive design. The goal is to make a desktop-friendly version of the layout the starting layout is a mobile first layout, which is one column with stacked content. The starting HTML and CSS is provided and now I just need to add in my own changes. In the mobile layout, the nav is displayed vertically. The content displays right after. There are cards that display in a stacked view. And finally, content at the bottom displayed as a footer. MDN shows a preview of what the desktop layout should look like. A horizontal nav that displays on the right side of the screen. The cards should display in three columns, and the content that was at the bottom should display as a sidebar. First, I'll need to decide where the desktop layout should begin and then create a breakpoint for it. I'll make it around 1136 pixels based on the preview on MDN. So I'll create a media query for the breakpoint. So I'll do a min width of 1136 pixels. So this tells the browser to only apply these changes if the viewport is at least 1136 pixels or higher. However, instead of using pixels, I'm gonna convert the 1136 pixel width to EMs instead, which is a relative unit. If I divide 1136 by 16, this is how I get the 71 EM. 16 pixels is the standard root font size of browsers, so my media query size is now relative to that number. When I was reading through this course on MDN, it talked about a best practice technique. In an example, it says we'll use EMs, as this will mean that if the user has increased their text size, the breakpoint will happen at a similar line length but wider viewport than someone with a smaller text size. So it helps create a better user experience if the user has increased their text size. Now that I've established the breakpoint, I'll make changes to the layout for this condition. I'll start with the nav. The desktop version will need to display it horizontally and also over to the right. In the HTML file, the structure is the header, which contains a div for the title as well as the nav. And then the nav contains an unordered list. In the media query, I'm gonna change the layout for the header and I'm gonna change the layout to display flex. So the items inside of the header are now converted to flex items. I'll now need to target the items in the nav to get them to display horizontally as it shows in the preview. And for the unordered list, I'll also set the layout to display flex. To distribute spacing for the flex items inside the header, I'll add justify content space between for that to the header. I'm also gonna remove the border from the links, so I'll need to target the header's A element and set border to none. And then I'll add a little bit of padding to the nav to move it down. So that is the CSS for the header and nav version of the desktop layout. And you can see 
the layout is now starting to change as we move into the desktop version of this layout and it matches what is in MDN's preview. So now I'll go ahead and move on to the sidebar. So next, the bottom content should be moved to the right side per MDN's preview. In the HTML file, the structure is there's a main element and it contains the article element as well as a side, which is the sidebar. So basically article and aside, these two elements should display side by side. In my CSS within the media query, I'll target the main element. And for this, I'll set the layout to display grid. And nothing changes because I need to set how many columns I want in the grid. In this case, I want two columns. So to specify that, I'll add grid template columns and then add the amount of space that I want each column to take up. And I'll start with one FR for each. And by the way, the FR unit represents one fraction of the available space in the grid container. One FR is too small for the content area. So I'll update the first column to three in order to take up more space. With CSS grid layout, I can easily add space between these columns, which are the main and sidebar areas by creating a gap. So on the grid, I'll add a gap of 15 pixels, which creates a space here. Next, I'll need to move the sidebar down a bit. So I'll add a margin of 0.5 EM. Peeking back over to the MDN preview, the content and sidebar areas line up more with the edges of the header in the desktop layout. So I'm going to adjust the padding to the main element by adding padding zero. So with these new CSS additions, the sidebar is now on the right versus the bottom. So if I move back down to mobile, I can see that the sidebar was there below. And now as we move up to desktop, it's now on the right hand side so we can see the changes happening for desktop. Finally, I'll need to display the cards in column form like it shows here on MDN's preview. In the HTML file, the structure is that the cards are contained inside of an unordered list. In the CSS, I'll target the cards and set the layout to display grid. With display grid, I like that I can easily control the amount of columns that will display. Like MDN's preview, I'll set them to display in three columns. So I'll add grid template columns and set each to one FR. So each will take up one fraction of the space. And as you can see, they now display in three columns. And I'll add a 20 PX gap for the spacing. I can also display them as four columns if I wanted to by adding one more column. So now there is a desktop and mobile view of this layout. And again, the desktop view that I created begins at 1136 pixels. I can also add a tablet version of this layout at around 768 pixels. I think it would be okay to start displaying the nav horizontally here, as well as displaying the cards as columns. The stacked layout looks great for mobile users and the desktop layout looks great for desktop users. But then you have those devices that are not necessarily desktop and they're not necessarily mobile. And I think for this layout, it makes sense to create a tablet style layout. Even though the mobile layout is still functional on the tablet, I think it would look nicer to create a more tablet style version. So that's what I'm gonna create. So I'll add another breakpoint, a smaller one above the desktop version. And again, it'll be 768 pixels, but in this case, I'm going to use EMs, so 48 EM. 
I want the tablet version to display similar to the desktop version with slight differences. So I'll drop the sidebar back to the bottom, like in mobile view and display the cards in two columns instead of three. So I'll move all the header CSS from the desktop version to the tablet version. I'm also going to move the CSS for the cards here as well. So the header, nav, and card layout changes will now start at a minimum of 768 pixels or 48 EMs instead of 1136 pixels or 71 EMs. So now I wanna update the cards to display as two columns here instead. So in the CSS, in the tablet version of the layout, I'll just remove one column from grid template columns. And now we have two columns instead of three. All the CSS adjustments for the tablet layout are complete. And so you can see the changes. If I move back out to the desktop version, the only thing I wanna adjust now is setting the cards back to three columns here instead of two. For the cards, since the grid is already set here in the tablet version, in the CSS for the desktop version, I just need to adjust the grid columns to three. So now there are three different versions of the layout. One, there's a layout for mobile users, which is a one column stacked layout. A layout for tablet users, which is a horizontal nav. Two column cards view, and then some content at the bottom displayed as a footer. And finally, desktop users. It'll display the bottom content as a sidebar and the cards as three columns. So again, MDN's course is a great way to practice skills, read articles, learn something new, or just review certain topics. It's definitely my go-to for all of the above. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.